to this wonderful, to this great, amazing committee to make this event happen every year. Uh, this is truly amazing. And I, above all, you know, I like to thank our Heavenly Father for having me here today, for continuing to use me as an instrument to all of you uh, to continue to, you know, um, just express the, the wonders of his amazing and wonderful, you know, power. Um, so thank you. Thank you all for being here and listening to me. Um, I was um, born in Managua, Nicaragua. Um, immigrated to the States in 1978 at a very, very young age. Uh, I was nine years old and then um, uh, moved into, we came to Montebello. I grew up in Montebello. I attended East One Intermediate, uh, went to Shore High School, graduated Shore in 1987. Uh, then I went to Rio Hondo College. I uh, got my AA degree, uh, business degree, uh, Rio Hondo College, and I got a, shortly after that I got an excellent job. I was one of those lucky kids that um, started in the business you know, uh, world very, very young. I was 18 years old. Um, started traveling. Um, I got a position for international sales in the automotive business. Um, and then I married a realtor, a uh, broker. And then I got my real estate license. We started buying properties. And, and then um, I got my notary license, you know, I'm the jack of all trades, you know, very busy, working all the time. Um, got pregnant. Uh, and I had my first child in 1993, January. Um, Tatiana Leiva, who's a now, she's 19, and she's attending her second year of university at St. John's, New York. Um, then I got divorced, unfortunately, after 18 years of marriage. And shortly after my divorce, I, uh, I met uh, my second my second significant other and uh, decided to um, start a family and I became pregnant again for the second time. I lost a baby. Um, when I got pregnant in uh, early 2007, I, I felt a lump in my right breast, okay? And I thought that was kind of weird. So I went to go get it checked. You know, I went and I got uh, I got a, a mammogram. Uh, I was young, you know, so they wouldn't perform mammograms on females after they were until they were 40 at that time, and I think they still do. Um, so being that I was 36, um, they were like, "Well, you know, I don't think it's cancer." You know, um, I had gotten implants in May of 2006, so they thought that it could be a leak on one of the um, the implants. Um, so they performed a mammogram and also shortly an ultrasound. And the results came back as a simple benign cyst. Nothing to worry about. Everything's going to be fine and, you know, just move on with your life. There's no history of cancer in my family. Nobody in my family, you know, um, has ever had any kind of, well, my great-grandparents, I, I take back, they had lung cancer. Uh, but, you know, nothing, no one in my family immediately. Um, so anyway, so I moved on with my life. Um, I lost that baby. You know, I had a miscarriage. And shortly after that, I became pregnant again, six months later, September of 2007. Um, I felt that so-called water uh, cyst. It grew in large. But then I thought, well, you know, when you're pregnant, everything grows. Your stomach, your breast, everything. You know, you, you just get big everywhere. So then I was, okay, well, I'll check it out when I go to my gynecologist. And I did. Um, the day that I got, you know, I went to my first visit, he said, well, you know, you're going to go get an ultrasound, and we're going to, you know, get an ultrasound of the baby. The same day that you go for the ultrasound of, of, of your pregnancy, um, we're also going to do an ultrasound of your breast. And I said, okay. So I um, went in, and, and that was the day. Okay, that day was um, actually uh, a great, it was an amazing day. Uh, because I thought I was expecting one baby, 
Okay. So then I, I, I get to the uh, to the uh, um, the ultrasound um, uh, doctor, you know, uh, and he was they were performing the ultrasound um, on me, and you know she had this device on my stomach, and then she she had the screen, you know, right there, and I was like, and she's looking at me, and she goes, um, any twins running your family? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm all white. And she goes, well, meet baby A and meet baby B. I was like, oh, my God, I'm having two babies, okay? I had waited 15 years to get pregnant, and I get two, you know, for one. So that was really nice. Um, um, I, I wasn't really paying attention uh, um, about the lump anymore. You know, I was just like so overly excited, you know, I was overwhelmed with joy, happiness, I, I was having two babies. So, you know, they, they, they did perform the ultrasound of, of, the, of the big lump in my breast, and um, I went home, and I never thought anything about the, the, the lump in my breast, never, nothing, you know, I was just pregnant with twins. And... Um, the next day, uh, I get a phone call, and she tells me, you need to come in for an aspiration of your breast. And I said, an aspiration? And I said, oh, I said, so it's water. I said, maybe of these, maybe one of these implants, it's leaking, you know, because I heard of stories like that, you know, leakage of implants and stuff, and I thought, okay, well, maybe it's leaking. So, well, she called me back an hour later, and she tells me my mistake. <laughs> She goes, you have to come in for a biopsy. And I said, a biopsy? I said, so what? You see a mass in there? I mean, what is it? And she's like, I can't really tell you. You're going to have to wait till you talk to, to your doctor. And I said, oh, okay. So I did. Um, they scheduled me for a biopsy, and I came in the next day right away. And um, I had to wait two weeks for the results to come in. Still, I'm not thinking about cancer. Last thing in the back of my head. I'm actually excited, getting ready. You know, I have a quinceañera that I was preparing for. My daughter, just turning 15. And I was having a 350 guest party, you know, uh, getting ready to have this big bash. You know, people flying in from all over the country. And, and um, so not, cancer was not in my head. And besides that, I was over 35, so my amniotic fluid, amniotic fluid is what, it's, it, it's this fluid that um, when you're past 35, if you're testing high, you know, chances are that one of the babies has, you know, chances of low, low syndrome, you know. Um, and so they, they did an amniocentesis test on me just to make sure the chromosomes on these babies were, were fine. And, and so I was really concerned about the results of the, of the amniocentesis test than I was of my breast. So anyway, so we go skiing um, December 26, 2007. Two weeks have gone by already. And I'm still waiting for the amniocentesis test results, not the breast, okay? Never the breast. So we're skiing and, and, uh, and we're coming down the mountain uh, December 26th of 07. We're in my in the suburb van and full of family, friends, and my daughter, Tatiana's right next to me. My cell phone rings, because I had no service up there. But when I was coming down from the mountain, my, my phone started ringing. Hello. Um, hi, Zoila. I'm all, hi, doctor. How are you? Dr. Park, my gynecologist. So I'm thinking, Which you got you? news? Already on my amniocentesis, are the babies okay? <sighs> Zoila, um, you have to be here tomorrow first thing in the morning to see an oncologist. An oncologist. You know, seriously, I didn't know what an oncologist was. I, I didn't know that that was a cancer doctor. I didn't. Uh, and I said, an oncologist, what is an, oncolog uh, an oncologist? And he says, well, uh, your test results came back, and uh, it's malignant. You have stage 3C, 
breast cancer, infiltrating ductal carcinoma. And the reason I'm telling you this over the phone, Zoila, is because you need to come in tomorrow morning, you know? Cancer, what? My daughter sitting next to me, the car is full of people. Everybody's quiet, silent, you know? Everybody starts crying. My daughter's one of them. I mean, she's like cancer, you know? You hear that and you're like, oh my God, she's gonna die, you know? And I thought I was gonna die too. I did. I was scared to death. I was. I didn't want to show that. Didn't want to reflect that. Especially having my 15, my 14 year old daughter sitting next to me. <laughs> Sorry. So, anyways, so um, I'm like, okay. Um, so, what about the babies? Zoila, um, it is recommended that you have an abortion. And I said, why? because we don't know how bad the cancer is. And we can't tell if you're, if you're pregnant. We can't do anything. We don't know if it's spread to any of your vital organs, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys. We don't know. So you have to have an abortion. That tore me apart. I didn't care about the cancer. I was so worried about those babies and about that Diana. You know, but anyways, my daughter's like screaming next to me. And she's like, Mom, I want to cancel my party. I don't want this quinceañera anymore. I don't want it. And I said, what? Are you crazy? I said, we've been planning this for over a year and a half. You have to be kidding me. And she goes, I don't, I don't want it, Mom. And I go, well, guess what? I said, we're two weeks from this big event. And it's going to happen. I said, I'm not going to stop it. So anyways... So the next day, I did. I went to the oncologist, and he said to me, um, you know, Zoila, um, the reason we've already scheduled your abortion, you know, you, you, you have to go for a three-day orientation meeting this Thursday. That was a Monday. Um, 